Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, this won't be long because I have a convention to attend. Yes, I'll be watching the Jehovah's Witness convention that is online and downloadable. Um, the reason why is because that's where and how I keep my sanity. Um, we have a few things that we need to talk about. And I do want to let you know that last night we had a meeting with a mayor legion. There were some issues as far as individuals not understanding the process. Ladies and gentlemen, a mayor legion is only doing what is explained partly, not all of it is not explained in IRS Tax Topic 453. The moment I stumbled upon IRS Tax Topic 453, the IRS let us know that we had to document the debt. Well, remember, the courts only operate on a presumption by preponderance of evidence. And so the idea was to provide a preponderance of evidence that you've attempted to collect on a debt. However, the law says that you are allowed to forgive the debt. Now, if you are allowed to forgive the debt, all debt that is forgiven over $600, you must do a 1099C. Sorry. It's the law! And so when you do a 1099C, you get to do a Schedule C when you file your taxes and write that stuff off. Now, most people have not been understanding write-offs and charge-offs. Ladies and gentlemen, because you don't understand it, that's your fault. It's not my job to explain that to you. But many of you think that it is my job. So, I'm going to follow your lead and I'm going to make it my job to explain it to you. <laughs> Certainly. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me go ahead and explain. When you write something off or charge something off, there is no money! I'm sorry, would you be quiet? But there isn't any money! Okay, all right, all right. God. He's right, ladies and gentlemen. There is no money. So you're literally charging off nothing. And they're demanding you pay. Pay attention. Nothing. This is all a paperwork game. So, download the form 3115. Today, right now, this very moment. And send it into the IRS. Let them know that you use the accrual method. Just as simple. Now, we're going to give you a basic understanding of how you're going to do the accrual method. You're going to create two books. So let's do that now. Oh, we're going to create two books? Oh, Mommy, can I create a book? And she created a book, and he created a book, and everybody has a book. Oh, God, we got to book this tonight. Because if we don't book it tonight, we'll never get it. Sorry, this is a motion that we're writing. This is R&D. Um, Y'all don't understand it, but I'm doing, and I will tell you, the, what I'm writing is the most extensive, but the most complete petition. We don't do motions, ladies and gentlemen. Don't you ever write a motion ever again for the rest of your life, okay? We don't do motions. So never, ever, ever write a motion for the rest of your life, okay? Matter of fact, we're going to do this. Now, we're going to take, we're going to bring you over here. This is going to be our total column. Toto! Okay, then we're going to bring you. Wait a minute. I, I don't want all of that. I just want this line right here. Oh, God. It look, See how it's separated? Uh-uh. Get that out of there. I want the whole line. We're going to even you out. Okay. Whew. Now, D-E-B-I-T. Debit and C-R-E-D-I-T. Credit. And what we're going to call this document, let me move this down. Y'all don't mind. We're going to call this document the 3115. 
five. Hey, C C A L. Oh, it's R U. I keep doing that. All right. Now, again, let me see if I can explain this to you so that you all understand. There is no money! I'm, I'm sorry. Would you stop that? But there isn't. I know, but God, would you stop? I have to get them to that point. They're not there yet. Okay? They, they keep thinking that they, they, they have to go and earn a living. They keep thinking that they that when they go to a job that they're earning something. They're not earning. Okay, I know, I know, I know they're not earning anything. It's just a ledger and accounting, and they just have to do the accounting the correct way. Give, give them an example. Okay, here's an example. I go to work for Walmart. Walmart is paying me minimum wage, but my wages for Walmart is I am worth $50 an hour. I don't get outrageous with it. I just do $50 an hour. And so at the end of the year, I do my taxes. My salary is $50 an hour. Walmart has only paid me $15 an hour. Oh, no. That means $35 an hour times all the hours I've worked, I now get to offset it. Oh, no. Okay, so let's do. Walmart, and we're going to make another column, and that's that's my problem. I should have did four columns. Oh, God, i got to add another column. Let's see if I can add another fourth column. I don't know if it's going to let me do that. I've never done that before, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, amended it after, you know, insert caption. Well, dang it, it does let me do that. It'll allow me to insert a caption. And we're going to call it, I want to, I, yeah, we're going to do it, we're going to do it, okay, give me my space, what y'all doing, all right. Oh, it even allows me to do numbering. So let's get rid of that. We got our caption. And, 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 and hold on. I, I've never done this before. I never, ever mess with any of this. Okay. All the rows are even now. And now we want to... We're going to go to table properties in a minute and take care of that. Matter of fact, well, I'm going to keep y'all here so y'all can see, okay? And it's going to give me labeling and everything. It allows me to do all of that. Oh, snappity wappity pappity toopity wappy. Okay, so that's what we need. Okay, we got our number. Oh, stop it. I don't want to add no numbers. Y'all add numbers. Error, 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 Will Robinson. Danger, Will Robinson. Oh, snap. I done messed up. Auto caption. Error, Will Robinson. Error, Will Robinson. I was just testing some things out. So how do I get rid of that? By just hitting the back button. <laughs> Snap. Bitty wappity pappity tappity. Okay, there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, like I said, all I want to do is add another row. I just need to add one more row. So we're going to go with property. Uh oh, where are my properties at? Hold on. Where are my property at? Mama, do you know how to get to my property? Come on now. Property. Whew. And let's see. Roll, roll, roll your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a dream. You know that song never ends? Roll, roll, roll your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Do you know that song never ends? Roll, roll, roll your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but... You know that song never ends? Roll, roll... I'm sorry, I apologize. I shouldn't have done y'all like that, but I'm an idiot. 
your mom. I mean, anyway, uh, give me a second, ladies and gentlemen. You see this debit and credit? I'm going to have to pause, y'all, because I have to do this over again. I need four rows. Okay? So one second. Now, actually, that didn't take long at all. So Walmart, subcontracting. So let's say by the end of the year, I want you to pay attention. Walmart, is, my salary is $50 an hour. So I add up all of the hours, and it comes to dollar sign, 90000 $90,000. We're going to just keep it rounded. But Walmart only gives me 20000 Give them a dollar sign. What you what you missing a dollar sign? Get Keep the dollar sign in there. All right, already. Okay. Which means that I have, owing to me by Walmart, Okay, now that's it. That's, but now hold on, hold on. Let's say my living expenses I know, I know, I know. Give me my S's. Okay, anyway. My living expenses is 500 500,000 dollars a year well because I don't live high on the hog but my living expenses I have to account for everything that I spend and I pay money on so that's my living expenses my cost of living okay now hold on we'll talk about all of this later we're not doing that part we're not taking care of this with the cost of living. We're not offsetting that yet, so stop it! Okay, now, that's my living expenses. The amount of credit towards that living expense, well, $400,000 dollars. That leaves me what, what? Well, because I'm minus, I, toward my living expenses, I spent, oh, I'm sorry, I apologize. Whew. I did that wrong, $600,000, which will, no, we can't do it that way. That, that won't work. Because if I make it $600,000 and we offset that, because that's what the offset is, the credit is, uh, give me my minus, okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, the offset, and I'll, I'll take care of that other thing in a minute. We have to do this like this. Hmm. Yeah. This has to be... The debit, the amount that I've deducted is one hundred thousand dollars. But I can't I don't want to do that because I spent more than one hundred thousand dollars out of my pocket. So my living expenses is we gotta do it the right way. So we're gonna make that five again. What we're gonna do with this is we're gonna make this Okay, ten thousand dollars, which gives me four hundred and ninety. Negative. No, see that will be a positive. So we're gonna make this a positive. Whew. I did this wrong. That's where the problem is. These are negatives. So negative. They're debits. Negative. Sorry, I, I hey it's been I haven't done this in a long time. Four nine zero comma zero 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 point zero zero. Okay, now let's say I do all the other expenses for the year. This is my Schedule C, by the way. This is what I'm attaching to my Schedule C. Now, I said I was going to take care of this. We're going to put this on the inside, but technically it should be on the outside. Okay, I'm going to put it on the outside because this is my accounting. You can do it however you want, okay? 
because you are grown whatever whatever you want to be so you can do whatever you want I'm gonna do it my way okay so we're gonna put the negative on the outside not on the inside because the negative is an outside man not an inside man okay now let's just say this was it so we have 490 plus 60 so that's 5 we got our negative dollar sign 560 comma 000, 000, 000, point zero zero. that's what I'm writing off on my taxes now oh I'm sorry we forgot one other thing ladies and gentlemen debit and we're gonna put it right up here two zero two one twenty twenty one this is for 2021 now what I get to do at the end of 2021 December 31st 1159 p.m. I get to carry this over at 12 a.m. January 1st to the coming year that makes this because I just received the credit we're gonna add another table okay just a table, so I'm gonna do it this way. Okay, I'm gonna do a table that way. Uh, because we're using the accrual method, I want y'all to pay attention. Five six zero comma zero 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 point zero zero, and now I add my dollar sign. Now there are gonna be a lot of accountants that are gonna tell me. Oh, no, that's not the way you're supposed to do it. And you know what I'm going to tell those accountants? Stay the f out of my business. <laughs> no, you're not going to do Yes, I am. Why would you do that? Well, let me explain, ladies and gentlemen, because I'm using the accrual method. This is carried forward. Now that negative is no longer a negative. It's not a loss. Because once I carry it forward, it becomes a positive. Now, let any accountant tell me I'm wrong. Now, they might say, well, that's not how we do it. I don't give a f how y'all do it. This is my accounting. This is how I do my accounting, not how you do yours. Do you guys understand that each one of you are responsible for documenting your accounting and being able to explain it? Well, I can explain, as I just told you, exactly how I did what I did. Why? Because there is no money! I'm sorry, would you stop that? But there isn't! Ladies and gentlemen, do you not understand that there is no money? Hold on, you guys didn't pay attention? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's see, what's this? Oh, sorry, this is the Civil Division for Connecticut. Uh, this is the young lady that I just had to write. Uh, because I sent somebody to the court and I sent them to get subpoenas in blank that, that's all they were supposed to get is subpoenas in blank and the court what the f are you talking about I ain't never heard of no subpoenas in blank well I don't give a f what you've heard about I have a right to subpoenas in blank everybody has a right to subpoenas in blank you don't have to tell them what the subpoena is for you just tell them I need these subpoenas stamped uh, I must have the caption well it does have the caption it has the name of the parties it has the case number and it has the name of the court I just need you to stamp it, you ignorant mother. Okay, just that simple. Well, they told her no. So she called me, and I sent her back in there, and they told her no, and I told her don't give them nothing. You don't need to leave nothing with nobody, but she did it anyway after I told her not to do it. People often do things I tell them not to do because they'll trust the idiot behind the counter before they trust me because the idiot behind the counter knows more than I do. Don't worry about it. it. happens all the time. Ladies and gentlemen, they said they were going to give it to the judge. Let me explain to you your right to subpoenas. If you're involved in any case, whether you're a defendant or whether you're a plaintiff, you have the right to issue subpoenas. And if you are pro se, pro per, representing yourself sui juris, you have the right to issue the subpoenas yourself. You don't need a clerk of the court. Why? Where's that right come from? Well, you have the right to compulsory. Compulsory! witnesses you can compel them you don't need the court's permission 
It says you have that right. Go back and look at the Sixth Amendment and the Fifth Amendment to the United States Constitution. You have that right. The courts don't give you that right. You don't need their permission. Your right to witnesses is your right to witnesses, not upon court's approval. The court cannot deny you a witness either. If the court thinks that the witness is not relevant, then that's a matter for the jury to decide, not a matter for the court to decide. See, we've been allowing the judges to make all the decisions. If you ask for a trial by jury, then you wait for a trial by jury. Any controversy created by the court is a matter for the jury to decide because the jury is to decide all matters of controversy. Whether or not the jury gets to decide whether or not something is adequate or the law is under jury nullification. The jury can ignore the law. That's why they have superior control over the matter. A jury under jury nullification gets to ignore the law. Ladies and gentlemen, I know the courts listen to my videos and I know the attorneys watch the videos. Don't think that that doesn't happen. I just, I just uh, was watching a video and somebody made a comment in the video. Uh, it's a pretty important video, but they made a comment and it was directed directly to my person without them mentioning my person because they mentioned something that they knew I would recognize. Been waiting for it. That's why I was watching that video. I've been waiting for them to show me that they were aware of my presence. And they did. And I am the happiest person on this planet. Because they are that important to me. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, as I said to you, I'll say it again. When you are doing your accounting, you need to understand one thing because I don't think you understand. So I'm going to show you because you need to see it for yourself. Self, 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 self. I want to know, so far as I'm concerned, that this bill represents the ideas of the new administration. The New Deal. Wait a minute. The new who? The New Deal. Well, wait a minute. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen, let's find out something. Under the Federal Reserve Act, the obligations are deposited as the security and gold for the reserve notes. Ladies and gentlemen, your obligations, which is the contracts you have with government, this is what I explained to somebody. If they want to challenge my tax credits, let me explain something to you. This is what I told Ameri Legion last night. I had a contract. Same type of contracts that were created at AmeriLegion, not AmeriLegion, uh, SAA Limited. That's why the arbitration, getting the arbitration done is essential because you have an order from an arbitrator. It doesn't matter what the courts say. As long as a year has gone by, right off that debt. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. Some people just really don't understand what's really going on. Oh, I, I did my arbitration and nothing happened. Nothing happened because you don't understand what you're doing. Ladies and gentlemen, my arbitrations were the first to be done by the SA organization, which is why I couldn't be a part of the SA organization, because I couldn't have anybody saying that I was committing fraud. Now, hold on. The law says that an arbitrator can be a party to the agreement, because an arbitrator is anyone whom the parties agree shall be an arbitrator. It's not whom the courts think can or cannot be an arbitrator. And that's what they hate, is that the parties get to choose an arbitrator. Ain't that interesting? So, ladies and gentlemen, we chose the sitcom organization. Why? Because there were people we didn't know. I didn't know these people. I just created the organization. I brought the people on. But I, there were no real qualifications other than the fact they had to learn about arbitration. There were some requirements for the arbitrators that were general requirements for arbitrators that they had to know. But once that was done, ladies and gentlemen, that's all she wrote. So now that we had the arbitration done and the parties were given an opportunity to attend and to respond and they chose to do neither, 
a 10, what do you mean? There was no hearing. Oh, of course there was. The hearing was in chambers. The hearings was without the parties being ever the wiser. What do you mean ever the wiser? I thought you said you gave them notice. We sure did. But the hearing had nothing to do with the parties being present. It's a summary disposition whether or not the party was in default because the request is for the arbitrator to determine whether or not there's a default. That's the only thing the arbitrator at SAA determines is whether or not the other party's in default, which is clear when the parties present their information, proof of service. And if the other party does not respond, showing that they responded according to the terms of the agreement, they're in default. The arbitrator has no choice. However, there was an issue with the amount that some people were putting on their arbitration awards. You know, some people were in uh, quadzillions, you know, and I'm not joking. Well, the arbitrator has to be reasonable with the amount that is awarded. Ladies and gentlemen, no one has ever responded to a single one of my arbitration communication. There was a title company involved in a matter that I was involved in, but they weren't really a party. They're the only ones who ever responded. We did have, now we have, I need you guys to understand, we have the court slandering SAA all the time. They'll say all kind of stupid things because, don't get me wrong, stupid people are going to read what they wrote and think because some judge said something that that's the law. Ladies and gentlemen, a judge can make whatever ruling they want. They're not communicating with us. They're not suing us when I say us because I am a subcontractor for SAA. After all of my arbitrations were heard, I became a subcontractor so that nobody could say there was a conflict. So as a subcontractor for SAA, ladies and gentlemen, my job was to be fair. Is the other party in default? We had some par parties that were bringing claims against states. Well, ladies and gentlemen, those are government obligations. Y'all don't understand? Pay attention. Upon deposit with the Treasury of the United States of all contract obligations of the United States, contract obligations of the United States, didn't the Congress in the Bradley Christopher Stark Act say that the Attorney General was bound by the agreement and therefore the United States was bound by the agreement because the Attorney General represented the United States? Well, ladies and gentlemen, now it becomes a contract obligation. I didn't say it. Congress said it. This is their junk. Do you not understand what I'm doing? I'm using their junk to my benefit. I'm suggesting you do the same. So I want you to pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. That's why I get to do the accounting, which is why when you added up all 17 of my arbitration awards. One of them, it has 24 different parties. When you add it all up, we're over $4 trillion. Oh, snap! What the... Exactly. So, ladies and gentlemen, those of you who have had those contracts filled out you need to follow the law. You need to complete the process, get the arbitration done, so that your obligation with government will be documented properly. Then you need to wait. You need to wait 90 days. You have to wait 90 days because they have 90 days to contest the award. They can't win if they contest the award. There's nothing the courts can do because they had to respond. If the courts say they don't have to respond, we'll take care of that shortly. Just trust me. It'll be taken care of shortly. I just needed this time period to get here so that we can take care of things. Okay? We'll be letting you know about that soon. But get your arbitration awards. Go to the arbitrator and have the arbitrator determine that they're in default and get an award from the arbitrator, the one that is named in the agreement, people. If you don't do that, then you don't get the write-off. 
because the debt you're making efforts to collect the debt has not been complete. Go back and read IRS Tax Topic 453. Once you get the award and you've waited the 90 days, send them a letter. Well, if you go through SAA, SAA, when they give the award, they tell the other party it's an attempt to collect the debt. You followed the rules for debt collection. SAA does that because it is an attempt to collect the debt. That's why they issue the award. So they can say this is an attempt to collect the debt. So you've done your job. You've notified the other party that they owe you money. Then after you've notified them, you say, hey, you got 30 days. The arbitrator lets them know they got 30 days. They don't pay within 30 days. Then, hey, y'all don't understand. That's what a mayor legion is for. Because a mayor legion also sends them notification. So now you got, for the arbitration award, three different, pay attention to me, three different proofs that you've attempted to collect the debt. You have yours, you have the uh, SAA, the arbitrator, and now you have Amera Legion. Interesting, ain't it? And so now, according to the law, you have a bad debt. And now you get to write off that bad debt. Just that simple. Ladies and gentlemen, off subject just for a second. Those of you who are wondering about the puppies, I will probably take uh, a photo of them. As a matter of fact, I'll probably videotape them shortly. What's, what's happening is I couldn't videotape them before because what happens is the cameras on my cell phone, well, they're all taped up. Uh, yes, because we don't play that. We don't play that watching and, you know, all the girls go by watching. Anyway, uh, no, we, we don't play that. I, I ain't played that last week, and I ain't going to play that tomorrow. You ain't going to just be videotaping me while I'm not aware of it. Here's the other thing. Those of you who have the camera systems that hook up to the Internet, the home security systems that hook up to the Internet, if you use the basic admin password, you're a fool. I'm sorry. If you use the basic password, do you not know that individuals can hack that system and can watch you, your family, do whatever you do if you have the cameras in your home? People are wondering why you see the TV um, on TV on the news, somebody talking to little kids through the camera system. Because they're hacking your system because of your password. It's your password. Those of you who use those little simple passwords, all you need is a password hacker. And you can get past those simple passwords. So in your password, use one of the symbols, the asterisk, the exclamation mark, the number sign, the dollar sign, the percentage sign. Use the question mark, the forward slash. Use any of those in your password. You don't have to use five or six, just a couple. Use upper and lowercase letters in your password. Ladies and gentlemen, you can use the same password you've always used. Just change it up. Okay, make it more difficult for people. All right, like I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a picture of the Rugrats. They're all asleep. And so it's just going to look like a, a Dog pile, <laughs> anyway, because some of them sleep on top of each other. As a matter of fact, that's their number one habit, is to sleep on top of each other. I have my whiners, which we're, we're coming to understand each other. There's one that's so needy, and it's the runt. I'm looking at him right now. He's the runt. He's not like Max, but it's the runt, and I know he's the runt because he's always getting to the food last. He's the smallest one. But he's doing all right. He's the whiner. Okay, don't have names for him yet. I do know that I picked out a name for one of them, and then I decided not to name them yet. If I do name them, there will be names that they that fit the personality of each one. No, I'm not going to call them whiny. Stop it, morons. Anyway, they're all asleep. They're doing well. The mother is outside. They're inside. She still has a habit of laying on top of them.
but now they have a little bit more size so and a little bit more strength. They are some very strong little dogs. I held one in my hand yesterday, and the amount of strength it was using to fight me from holding it because I had it upside down. And it is a very strong little animal. And that was the runt that was that strong. All the other ones are just as strong. Uh, they're strong enough to where they put their head in the gate and they can bend the metal. All right, let's get back to you guys understanding what's going on with the different organizations. Uh, and that's how I'm going to end this. Let's talk about SACOM. SACOM was, we're not creating securities anymore was creating securities. Why? Because, as you see, the securities backed of the obligation is the notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances. The SAP packs are all bills of exchange. Go and take a look, especially the QPAC. The QPAC is called a bond, and the people who have a QPAC don't realize what they have because they didn't pay attention. The QPAC is a bond. The amount of the bond is listed on the QPAC. Face value, that's sent to the government, ladies and gentlemen, as a deposit. Trust me, it's sent to the government as a deposit. Under the Federal Reserve Act, obligations that are deposited as security, oh, I'm sorry. One second, y'all. I, I had the system on an auxiliary uh charger because I was charging up my batteries and the auxiliary charger just expired. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to plug us in to the regular plug because we have energy in the battery and by plugging it into the regular plug I can now charge up the auxiliary charger because it's depleted and it's my auxiliary backup. It is powerful enough to give me 10 hours of charge time with the computer. And it doesn't, charging it up and having the computer on doesn't drain any energy from the system. I just needed to recharge the system with the sunlight we have today because the sunlight is what I need, dude. I need a lot of sunlight. So let's go back and talk about SACOM. SACOM created securities. That's right, out of thin air. Just like they created mortgage-backed securities out of thin air. Go back and read the big short. It will show you that they created mortgage-backed securities and then they created the so-called instruments that were used to bet against the mortgage-backed securities. They just created it out of thin air. Somebody just said, okay, we can do that. That's when you see them whispering to each other and you can't even hear them whispering. That's what they're doing. They're creating a security. And they did it. Just that simple. <laughs> they didn't have to register nothing or nothing. They just created it, people. Signed a contract and the, it was created. Ain't that interesting? I had somebody contact me about how do we gain control of our securities. Ladies and gentlemen, do you understand the best way to gain control of your securities is to create them? But some of you haven't done enough study. So that's why we did the SAP packs for you. The Securities Acquisition Trust Commission is what STATCOM stands for. Hey, there are going to be a lot of people in government who are going to hate me. Why? Because I'm doing the exact same thing the banks did. And guess what? I'm relying on this law have been from the very beginning. It's called the New Deal, ladies and gentlemen. So we want to stick to the New Deal. That's what SACOM does. So those of you who have been <laughs> I need my tax credit. I can't exist without the tax You don't even realize what you have. Shame on you. Shame on you. You have a security that you can use to back up your own instruments your own bills of exchange. You can use your security as security for your instruments. Lord have mercy. Did you not know that you can deposit your security into your bank account? All you got to do is attach a promissory note to it. Do your research. Don't just do it and ask the banks, how do 
I deposit a promissory note. What are the rules? Don't tell them what type of promissory note. They're going to say, what type of promissory note? Ladies and gentlemen, there's only one type of promissory note, a promise to pay. No, 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 no. I don't want to talk to you about specifics. I just need to know the general rules. Can you please show me? Ladies and gentlemen, when I contacted that court, they told me I had to put it in writing. So I wrote them a general communication in writing. Why? Because I was pulling up their rules. They don't have a specific rule for subpoenas in blank. Ladies and gentlemen, but hold on now. Connecticut is a part of the uniform court system. Ladies and gentlemen, by the way, this is not the judicial branch. These are corporations. Let me show you and prove to you before we go on about SACOM and all of them. Administrative judge, chief administrative officer. These are all chief clerk, reporter, chief staff, attorney. These are all deputy chief court administrator, former chief court administrator, chief administrative judge, administrative judges. Ladies and gentlemen, these are all administrative positions. These are all executive courts. This is not the Supreme Oh, well, look at that. Supreme Court is over all of these administrative courts because the Supreme Court also operates administratively. If y'all didn't pay attention, let me prove it to you right here. Article 3 of the Constitution. The jurisdiction of this court extends only to consideration. Consideration? Consideration. No, it doesn't. Jurisdiction of the court extends to all matters. Go ahead and read it. Go ahead and read Article 3. All controversies, because that's the judicial branch. Well, of cases or controversies, see, ah, controversies properly, properly brought before it. You see, it says properly. Excuse me, we're not... We were not bringing something before you properly. We were just bringing it before you so that you could assign it properly, mother. But anyway, so that's to let you know that there are a lot of people who are not going to be happy with the information you're receiving right now. But we're here to tell you what the organizations were set up for. So SACOM was to help you acquire your securities. SITCOM was the investment. The defrauded homeowners of America, you guys, be patient. We're getting the documents done now. The defrauded homeowners of America is not SACOM. Guys, you need to understand, SITCOM 911 LLC, SITCOM 911 LLC was a special trust that was created for the defrauded homeowners of America. Okay? There's over a trillion dollars worth of tax credits in that particular group alone. But we're getting ready to bring you all into another suit. And I need you all to be patient. I should have that done. My hope is by the 17th of August, I should have that done because that's going to be all I'm working on starting next week. And we'll get that filed and we'll show you and teach you and bring you up to speed as to what's being done. You don't have to worry about anything. Your names will already be included, those of you who are part of the Defrauded Homeowners of America. Those of you who paid into the Defrauded Homeowners of America who contributed, please understand that you will still get that percentage. You will still get that percentage. Please understand that that is not changing. Okay? And so those credits are coming to you. It's just we have to get to you. And you are not last on a totem pole, but the sap packers came first. And so they have to be taken care of first. And trust me, SACOM has been working around the clock to get those letters out. There are a lot of documents, and these are physical documents that need to be printed up, need to have a corporate seal. There are only two people who are authorized to have the company seals. Two people who are authorized to have the company seals. Ladies and gentlemen, what you guys don't know is we had individuals who were working for us who were creating sad packs and thought we didn't know. Thought we didn't know that they were creating sad packs for their friends and stuff. 
I want you all to understand, we may not be able to catch all of them, but we will catch the majority of them because if we cannot correlate your stat pack to a receipt on file with the company through one of our many portals, then you will probably not be getting anything. So when they ask you to send them a copy of the receipt, which you will have because you received a copy of the receipt in mail, and if it doesn't match our records, now most of you don't have to worry about that. That's only the people to where we really don't have anything, okay? But the people whom we do have it, ain't got to worry about nothing, okay? So I just want you all to be aware of that, that we have to be mindful because there are some cheats. We try to bring in people at SACOM that we can trust, that are trustworthy, but we don't always end up being successful. The last person whom we thought was trustworthy took over $20,000 from the organization. I told you I had a brother who took almost $10,000 from the organization that I had to pay out of my own pocket to keep from bringing charges against him because I promised him I would. So I paid that out of my own pocket. I figured I owed him that much because he let me stay at his house. He took care of a couple of things for me out of his own pocket. So since he took the money without asking, well, I'm not, and he knew, he told me, he says, and I know after I do this, you're not going to speak to me ever again. Ladies and gentlemen, he was right. He knew, he knew me. I have not spoken to that mother, I'm, I'm sorry, I have not spoken to him since I made him bring me the remaining money that was left in the bank account. Okay, I have not spoken to him since. Because it was just that simple. But I do have to contact Chase Manhattan because they have $5,000 of our money that we need to acquire back. And so I will start contacting them shortly. All right, now we're going to talk about the next organization that we put together for people, and that is the SITCOM Arbitration Association. We told you from the very beginning what that organization was there to do. It was there to utilize the arbitration system, and it was there to recognize that the courts and other government agencies were not going to respond, even though by law they had a duty to respond. We told you all that at the very beginning. We said they are not going to respond. Do you remember? And look at this. They have never responded. Not one time has any of these courts ever responded to me. No, no. Let me, let me, let me show you something so that you get it. In reply to your letter or submission received on this day, I regret to inform you. They are required to respond, ladies and gentlemen. And as long as they have a duty to respond, they don't have a leg to stand on. Let, let's do this. Um, this video right here, how we operate, ladies and gentlemen, if you guys don't even understand that this video took almost two hours to upload, whereas this video, the one that act with lawful authority, that's only 17 minutes long, took less than 15 minutes. Two hours. For a video that's three times as long, two hours. Two hours. Now, this video right here, which is half as long, took 15 minutes. Oh, this video, I realize I'm not selfish, okay? So I'm sharing this information. This is October 26, 2022. That's already done, ladies and gentlemen. It's an hour and 15 minutes. That's already done. It's been sitting up there for a while. And it won't be up for a while. Okay? So y'all got something to look forward to. I'll probably do three or four more like it, but that one is going to be the most interesting. The reason why I'm coming here is because we need to go to case text. And so I need to go backwards. Come on, backwards, I said. Oh, I hit the wrong arrow. I ain't supposed to be going to that backwards. Dang it. Sorry. I wasn't supposed to be doing that backwards. I meant this one right here. Sorry about that, y'all, 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 y'all. This video is going to be longer because of that, and I apologize. Give me one second to get...
had a duty to respond and fail to do so. Oh, do so is together, and there's supposed to be no end. So let, don't done so, done so. Who's done so? Is that like Gonzo? No, Dunzo, Hunzo and Gretel, Dunzo and Gretel. Uh -huh. Plaintiff had an opportunity to respond and failed to do so. Hold on. Plaintiff had an opportunity to respond. However, she clearly had an opportunity to respond and failed to do so. He was obligated to fully respond to the extent he was capable of doing so, but failed to do so. Do you understand, ladies and gentlemen, government has a duty to respond to its constituents. They, remember, there's a representative government. Of course they have a duty to respond. Mrs. Jackson, sorry, Miss Jackson, argued with Rushmore that Rushmore had a duty to respond to each of the questions in her May 26th letter and failed to do so. Furthermore, she claims, when you hear things like this, she asserts, she claims, she argues, when you hear stuff like that, that means that these idiots are going to rule against her. Okay? Uh-uh. You don't just assert it. You put the case law. Let them argue with Congress. The defendant had an opportunity to respond but failed to do so. The court further finds that the debtor had no duty to respond and had no duty, and having no duty to respond that its failure to do so was not intentional misrepresentation. It said that the debtor, this bankruptcy court, that the debtor had no duty to respond. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. The ALJ, the administrative law judge, had a duty to inquire further and failed to do so. Do you see it? A duty to respond and failing to do so will result in default, ladies and gentlemen. He had a full opportunity to respond to the motion and simply failed to do so. It really is that simple. So that's what sitcom arbitration association is there for, to determine whether or not they had a duty to respond. What? Hold on. Watch this. Had a prior relationship had a prior relationship creating a duty to respond and fail to do so. Ladies and gentlemen. Hold on. Defendant, however, breached that duty by failing to do so. Nuh uh We need duty to respond. Under these circumstances, it is apparent that Advantage had an affirmative duty to respond within a certain period of time and in a certain required manner. As long as there is a prior relationship, ladies and gentlemen, had a duty as a result of a special relationship to give correct information. But it is the prior relationship. As long as there is a prior relationship, you can amend the contract. And as long as there is a relationship, contractual relationship between the parties, they have a duty to respond. So we put contractual. See? Uh oh, get rid of that I. What what's the P doing there? Okay, had a contractual relationship creating a duty to respond and failed to do so. Just real quick. Oh, I'm sorry, case text is like Google. You just have to ask the question in case text according to the way the courts would say something. Empire had a contractual obligation to safeguard the whole and failure to do so constituted a breach of the contract. So, ladies and gentlemen, a duty to respond and failing to do so is a breach of the contract. So, let me see. I'm looking for respond. The majority opinion dispenses with the duty question by observing that even if the traveler had no duty to respond, since it did respond, it incurred a duty to exercise due care. Actually, they're right. Okay, they're 100% they're right there because the person responded. So that puts 
a duty upon them. That puts the onus upon them. The CLM. I don't know what CLM is for. Clem? Clem? Clementine? Refused to do so and breached his duty. No, we need a duty to respond. Alleged duty to respond to his request arises from a contractual obligation set forth in the agreement between the parties. The plaintiff failed to show, pay attention, that the defendant's alleged duty to respond to his request, this is a lie. Whoever is making this decision is a lie. The plaintiff failed to show that the defendant's alleged duty to respond to his request, see, look at this, they, they have a duty to respond. Accordingly, summary judgment will be granted in favor, and that's when this person probably did not appeal. Okay, says that it was his job to respond, uh, prove that they had a duty to respond. No, we have a contractual duty to respond. See, the RLI owed a contractual duty to Southern to respond in one of three ways. Because the parties have a contractual relationship with each other, they must communicate with each other. That's why there is an obligation or duty to respond. And that's what SICOM is there to determine, that the parties had a prior relationship, which creates a duty for the parties to communicate with each other. Hold on. Which creates a duty for the parties to communicate with each other. If the parties have a duty to communicate with each other, pay attention, each other, that means they must respond to each other. Notice what happens if you fail to respond. You have 30 days to respond. You fail to respond. Okay, you're in default. Okay? Under these circumstances, it is apparent that Advantage has an affirmative duty to respond within a certain period of time and in a certain required manner. Duty to respond is a duty to respond, ladies and gentlemen. That's what SAA is there determined. SAA, under the law, determines whether or not the party had a duty to respond and whether or not they failed to respond and or act accordingly. And if they did, then there is a default being entered. That's the only thing SAA is there to do is to determine if there is a default. It's a summary disposition hearing, i.e. the same as a summary judgment. There is no need for the parties to go back and forth. There is no need for the parties to be present. It's electronic and electronic only, based upon evidence presented, documentation. It is 100% legal what is done because the courts do it all the time. Now, let me, if you guys would definitely listen and pay attention, let me prove to you that the administrative process is viable and legal. The IRS sent me a document from a tax collector saying, hey, you lost $5,000 plus interest, which is $6,100 and blah, blah, dollars. They, apparently, they're claiming they sent me notice. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I always respond to their stupid notices. They didn't send me no notice. They didn't send me no, hey, this is a frivolous filing. I didn't receive none of that bulls, I mean, bull, crap, I mean, uh, you know, stuff. But they said they sent it. Oh, no, what am I going to do? Well, ladies and gentlemen, they sent me a letter, and they said it was a civil matter, and they sent me a letter, and I didn't respond according to them. I didn't respond. I use a P.O. box, ladies and gentlemen, that everything is scanned in. So they ain't sent me nothing. But let's 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 not go there. Let's say that they sent it to me and I failed to respond. Now they're charging me interest. I'm sorry. When you send a letter out to them, a government agency, and they fail to respond, don't you get to do the same thing? It's called equal protection of law. If they can do it, you can do it. The IRS just showed us by sending me that notice that the administrative process works, that you don't need to go to court. They didn't get a judgment from a court. They just charged me and said I owe them a debt. Oh, no. So don't you get to do the same thing without going to court, the same as they did? That's what SAA is there for, ladies and gentlemen. They're there to issue your summary judgment under your arbitration agreement where government and you have agreed that this is the process. Oops. Once you get that award from the arbitrator, that is as good as gold because cash. Why? Because that arbitration award, especially if it's against a government agency, is an obligation of the United States. As we learned about here, 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 here. It's a contractual obligation of the United States, i.e. obligations 
that are deposited as the security or gold for the reserve notes are placed in the hands of the Federal Reserve agent. All you guys got to do is tell them, hey, Federal Reserve, I need to know how to apply this section of the act. Go back to that paragraph. That act is still in effect. Hasn't gone no place. That's what SAA does. So those people who have been, I don't want to get the, um, the award because I want to sit back and wait for it to freeze over. Because I heard it, I heard because of global warming, it's defrosted. So I'm going to wait for it to freeze back over because global warming says it'll never freeze back over. And so you keep waiting and keep waiting and keep waiting and see how nothing will ever work out. But the courts have said SAA is... Blah, blah, blah. The courts have said a whole lot. Ladies and gentlemen, they've even got the attorney general to investigate. They wanted to say we were committing fraud, that we were, as an organization, SAA was conspiring with you to defraud these entities because they got pissed off that we were using us people were using the arbitration clause to our advantage as we said before they have not changed the arbitration act they have not attempted to change the arbitration act they can change it but they're not going to and do you know why they're not going to change the arbitration act because they're not finished using it. No, they want to take full advantage of it before anything else. So until they finish taking advantage, that Arbitration Act ain't going nowhere. So y'all go right ahead and use it to your benefit. SAA ain't going nowhere. SAA ain't going nowhere. Now, for those of you who, after a year and the party has not complied with the Arbitration Act and the Arbitration Award and the contract between the parties, and you want to have that thing revisited by SAA, that is your choice. You can get that done. Okay? Again, that is your choice. That is not the court's choice. That's not the other party's choice. That's the party who is sitting up there aggrieved, whom followed the rules, and the other party did not follow the rules. Okay? Your choice. Sorry, uh, my dogs are, they're puppies. And so I have a, an area where they can go and relieve themselves. And what they do is they go and they relieve themselves. And so I have a mop that is prepared and got the right chemicals to come and clean up where they mess up okay and so that's what I'm doing right now away from the computer so if y'all having a problem hearing me real quickly understand the reason why is because I'm over here mopping up some stuff and the thing about it is I have um, I'll tell you what I did so that you can see the genius behind it I have um, this so called and they all want to go at the same time so that's all right it's 11 o'clock and they just ate and so they're all doing the I need to relieve my water they're not doing the other thing it's just water and I'm coming and I'm cleaning up the water that they're leaving behind and it is necessary because my house cannot smell like dogs. Other people can live that way. I had been in an environment where a guy, he did live that way, and I can't handle that. So I'll be back at the computer in a second because that was at least five of them going to town. And so I have a brand new mock bucket. Well, it's not brand new, but the water in it was fresh, and the soap in it was fresh, and so the perfume in it, was fresh. Oh, I can't just use soap and water. I have to use something to leave uh, that spring smell to their environment. And give me one more second, ladies and gentlemen. I have a floor fan that I am turning on for them. As the temperature starts to change, I want them to be comfortable because they are my pets. And now I have to get a hand wipe and wipe my hands, even though I've only touched the mop, I still have to get the hand wipe. You know what I'm saying? We've got to be hygienic around here. 
and probably Friday I will give them a bath and they'll just have to live with it because they're not used to it. All right, so now you have SAA, SACOM, SICOM, 911 LLC. The next organization that is of import that we need to talk about is AmeriLegion. Now, AmeriLegion, if you notice, all of these organizations deal with this information right here. AmeriLegion is there to provide proof of your outstanding debt to help you do the 1099-C where you don't have to do anything. AmeriLegion is there to help you do the 1099-C where you don't have to do anything. They file it, fill it out, send it in for you. We take care of the charge as a result of your payment into the system with them. Now remember, hold on ladies and gentlemen, each one of your payments to AmeriLegion and any other organization is considered a security deposit. You're making a deposit. You, you didn't understand that? That's why you deposit your documents online. You're depositing that into the organization. We are a depository institution. What, you didn't know? Aw, uh, it says that under the Federal Reserve Act, obligations that are deposited as the security. Of course you're depositing securities. Hold on. Now, let me make sure you guys understand. It says the, the, the provision is for the issuance of Federal Reserve notes and not Federal Reserve bank notes and the security that backs these obligation notes drafts or the securities that backs these so-called Federal Reserve notes is the obligations, the contracts with government, notes, drafts, bills of exchange, banking acceptances as outlined in the section. Ladies and gentlemen, let me explain to you. Your contracts, your arbitration agreements are valid. Congress has already said it. That's why you attach the Bradley Christopher Stark Act. Okay? They can't get around it. It doesn't matter what a judge says. The ju These are not judicial branch courts. Did you not understand? These are not real judges. Okay? Article 3. That's why we went to the Supreme Court, so they can assign it to an Article 3 court. They identify... Under Article 3 of the Constitution, the jurisdiction of this court, okay, they say they're operating under Article 3. Why? Because this is the Supreme Court of the United States of America. You better stop barking at me. I don't know. What, what, what is... Sorry. Give me a second. What you, who are you barking at? Huh? That's the runt that I told you guys about sitting up here asking me to spray it with water. Okay? I, I, it's on mist. But that's all, that's all he wants is for me to miss him. Okay, all right, all right. We'll talk later. He hears me talking, and so all he wants is for me to spray him down. And I'm not going to drench him, so he, that's all he's going to get for now. What we're going to do is I, I want to show you something. And I, that's, I'm only keeping one. Okay, I'm only keeping one. Ladies and gentlemen, this case right here is very important. I'm going to talk about it only briefly right now for you guys so that you know. This is the case that involves the Trading with the Enemy Act. The Supreme Court has held that Rehnquist's opinion rejected the opinion of the First Circuit Court that supposes that the 1977 Grandfather Clause was supposed to freeze the 1917 Trading with the Enemy Act. When, in the opinion of the court, the provision of that 1917 act was preserved. So was the amendment in 1933. It was also rejected that the regulation of travel-related purchases must be based on a separate authority for that governing, for that governing the regulation of other transactions involving property. It also asserted that President Carter and Reagan had wished to maintain the essential restrictions and provisions of the Trading with the Enemy Act, which is why it was never repealed. Shh! Don't tell nobody! That's why we're going to be operating under the Trading with the Enemy Act. Okay, that's why this case, this case is Reagan versus Wald. You will find that case interesting, ladies and gentlemen. But watch what I do, and I want you to see this. U-N-I-T-E-D-S-T-A-T-E-S-S-U-P, Supreme Court. Okay, now I want you to understand, you, I put in 
Supreme Court. You see, it says Supreme Court of the United States, but that's not what I put in, right? SCOTUS, Supreme Court of the United States. That's SCOTUS, but that's not what I put in. I said the United States Supreme Court. See, the U.S. Supreme Court. Interesting, ain't it? United States courts. Interesting, ain't it? But what? where is the Supreme Court of the United States? How come this all says United States courts? Now, this one says Supreme Court of the United States, but I said, now watch this. He's still barking at me, y'all, because he hears me talking, and they, they definitely want to come over here uh, to where I am. So what I'm doing, I'm purposely putting in the United States Supreme Court. See, it says United States Supreme Court. Even though it says Supreme Court of the United States, seal of the United States Supreme Court. Okay, these are two different courts. They're not the same court. Okay, hold on. The Supreme Court of the United States is the highest court in the federal judiciary of the United States. Okay, it has ultimate appellate jurisdiction over all U.S. federal court cases. Hold on. Appellate jurisdiction? But that's not why it was originally set up. Shh, don't tell nobody. The Supreme Court is a court, used to hold court, used to have court cases. Okay, but you're going to see landmark united states supreme court marbury versus uh, uh, that was the supreme court of the united states that one i do know because that is a yeah so they are mixing apples and oranges here cookies cookies man i don't want no cookies please we ain't allowing all of nothing okay ladies and gentlemen yeah so they're not listing the court hey dread scott Hey, what up? Uh, three-fifths of a man? Man, I'll be three-fifths of a man. Anytime you want me to be three-fifths of a man, I'll be a slave was property. They reason that a slave was property. So when they say all property in the United States is owned by the government, hold on. A slave was property, ladies and gentlemen. That was the Supreme Court. I didn't say that. Y'all need to understand. Three-fifths of a man, property. People are property. People are property. Okay? People are property. And once you understand people are property, then you understand that that's what they're seizing every time they arrest you. They're seizing the corpus, the property, the body. They're not seizing the natural person because they cannot speak as to the natural person in their courts. That's why this is the American Bar Association. I don't even know why I'm here. Okay, because if you notice, it's not giving us the United States Supreme Court. It's giving us deliberately SCOTUS. And that's Google, because Google's listening, y'all. And it knows that I'm looking specifically for the United States U.S. Supreme Court. They know that I'm listening for that. But see, pay attention. This is a... Let's do that. Hold on. V. P. That's supposed to be a space. Okay. About the court opinions. See, it's not giving it to me. Somebody did an article, uh, the U.S. Supreme Court versus Supreme Court of the United States. And so it's not giving me that information. It's giving me, now, as I told everybody, if I keep going, I will find it, but I don't have time to be finding it, okay? And the reason why I don't have time to be finding it is because you all need to understand, Google makes its money on one premise. And the premise that Google makes its money on is that it is the best search engine in the world. Okay? If Google does not let me find what I'm looking for, then that means I will go someplace else. That means it will lose that wonderful advertisement status as being the number one search engine in the world. Oops. So that's why, for a fact, I can put in the 
information and know that Google will eventually give it to me. I just would have to continue to search and search and search and search and search. And because they've changed the algorithm, I will have to keep playing with Google until I understand the uh, parameters of its algorithm now. Before you could put in brackets and all of that stuff, you can't do that no more. Okay. But you notice it keeps saying the United States Supreme Court. United States, it was only in 19... When they changed, when they did the Second Judicial Act, I uh, believe it was 1948, when they did that stupid act, that's when they changed the name of the courts, putting United States in front of it. See? Supreme Court, Tennessee, Administrative Office of the Court. Now, every state is administrative. All their courts are administrative. But then they also have a constitutional court. Two different things. So you have the administrative court where they put United States before the name of the court or the name of the state before the name of the court. Remember, the court does not precede the state. The state is representative of the people. So when you put the court ahead of the people, i.e. such as United States Supreme Court, as opposed to the Supreme Court of the United States, okay, when you say of the United States, that puts the people ahead of the court. I know it doesn't seem that way, but that's just the way it is. So, ladies and gentlemen, now that you have that information, what AmeriLegion is doing is AmeriLegion is just documenting the fact that the parties have been notified, documenting that the parties are in default, and documenting that the debt has been forgiven. Why? That it has been offset. It's time to balance the budget. Ladies and gentlemen, can I explain to you to this day, uh, it's been three months since I did my first cancellation of debt. It has been, quote unquote, accepted by the Internal Revenue Service. Now, people say, well, that's what you get in a frivolous filing for. No, that was three months ago. If, if I was to be receiving a frivolous filing, they must notify me. No, and it would have been for each one because I've done over 14. So it's not for that. Oh, and by the way, I'm not doing it under the Social Security number for which they're claiming a frivolous filing. That's what you need to understand. It's being done under the corporation, the Eon Foundation. And the Eon Foundation has received no such communications. Okay, it's time to do what Jada Pickett and my girl Latifah say it. It's time to set this mother off. To this day, 1099Cs have been accepted. We've had five 1099Cs rejected. Sorry, these were the 1099Cs for the defrauded homeowners of America. Remember, that's a trillion dollars. So we couldn't do it. Well, it's, it's, it's more than a trillion because there was more than one party. Remember, they gave the banks $998 billion as a starter check and then gave them 25 trillion more dollars okay so there were many parties involved and we involved those parties and again we involved the operate cause in the congressional act and that is right here the new deal that they had a duty to respond i.e. a contractual obligation Notice this, upon deposit with the Treasury of the United States of all contract obligations of the United States in any notes. Okay? All contract obligations. So those of you who have that, you can utilize the Merrill Legion to prove that you have attempted to collect the debt, that they have not paid, that you've forgiven the debt, and that you're writing off the debt. And the write-off equates to a credit. So for me, if I didn't have the credits, then I'd be my credit would be horrible. But I'm just going to offset it because one of the debtors is the IRS. So I'm just going to offset it with that debt. And that's going to be the end of that problem. And I'm going to demand, because they're using a third-party debt collector, I'm going to demand that they pay the following the remaining balance. And if they don't, then we'll go to the federal tax court and get this matter resolved. I.e., not tax court, 
federal court of claims. Tax court is in the legislative court. Okay, it's legislative. That's all the tax court is. So we'll go to the court of claims, which is also, pay attention, a legislative court. I think that's an executive court. Okay, look, ladies and gentlemen, because the courts, so many of them are corporations, we don't know which one is a corporation and which one is not. So how do we find out which one is a judicial branch court? They all carry the same name on their court. So how do we access it? That's what that video was about for you guys to be asking the Supreme Court. So I would send that letter out even if you ain't got no cases because you would help out tremendously in this effort. Hey, I got to go. I just wanted to share this information. I know it's a lot of information, but we wanted you to understand what the organizations were set up for. Now, again, that's why all of the fees are flat fees. That's why we're not coming after y'all in the future asking you for more money, money, money. Come on, we need more money, 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 money. Come on, we need more money. You don't hear us doing none of that, and you're not going to. We're not in this for the money. It's not about the money. We're not trying to extort anybody. We're not trying to take out of anybody's pocket. Get your hand out of my pocket! We're not trying to get in nobody's pocket. Okay, we keep our hands to our sales. Your mama. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I say have a very good day, and I hope this information proves beneficial. Goodbye.